Hello, uh, this is uh, Mike Carson from the Rathbearing Tree, one of the editors at the website, and we are, some of us are sharing our favorite poems or poems that we are reading, and I'm going to do that as well today. And so I have for you uh, a Sylvia Plath poem. Uh, I've been reading Plath uh, a lot over the last uh, four months uh, and through quarantine, uh, pretty much every night out on my porch. Um, and Platt's got a lot of great poems, and it's hard to choose, but I'm going to go with Bee Meeting, or the Bee Meeting in honor of spring. And of course, it's Platt, so it's a strange spring, always. The Bee Meeting. Who are these people at the bridge to meet me? They are the villagers, the rector, the midwife, the sexton, the agent for bees. In my sleeveless summery dress, I have no protection and they are all gloved and covered. Why did nobody tell me? They are smiling and taking out veils tacked to ancient hats. I am nude as a chicken neck. Does nobody love me? Yes, here is the secretary of bees with her white shop smock, buttoning the cuffs at my wrist and the slit from my neck to my knees. Now I am milkweed silk. The bees will not notice. They will not smell my fear, my fear, my fear. Which is the rector now? Is it that man in black? Which is the midwife? Is that her blue coat? Everybody is nodding, a square black head. They are knights and visors, breastplates of cheesecloth knotted under the armpits. Their smiles and their voices are changing. I am led through a bean field. Strips of tinfoil winking like people, feathered dusters fanning their hands in a sea of bean flowers, creamy bean flowers with black eyes and leaves like bored hearts. Is it blood clots the tendrils are dragging up that string? No, no, it is scarlet flowers that will one day be edible. Now they are giving me a fashionable white straw Italian hat and a black veil that molds to my face. They are making me one of them. They are leading me to the shorn grove, the circle of hives. Is it the hawthorn that smells so sick, the barren body of hawthorn etherizing its children? Is it some operation that is taking place? It is the surgeon my neighbor neighbors are waiting for. This apparition in green helmet, shining gloves and white suit. Is it the butcher, the grocer, the postman, someone I know? I cannot run. I am rooted, and the gorse hurts me with its yellow purses, its spiky armory. I could not run without having to run forever. The white hive is snug as a virgin, sealing off her brood cells, her honey and quietly humming. Smoke rolls and scarves in the grove. The mind of the hive thinks this is the end of everything. Here they come, the outriders on their hysterical elastics. If I stand very still, they will think I am cow parsley, a gullible head untouched by their animosity. Not even nodding, a personage in a hedgerow. The villagers open the chambers. They are hunting the queen. Is she hiding? Is she eating honey? She is very clever. She is old, old, old. She must live another year, and she knows it. While in their finger joint cells the new virgins dream of a duel they will win inevitably, a curtain of wax dividing them from the bride flight, the upflight of the murderess into a heaven that loves her. The villagers are moving the virgins, there will be no killing, the old queen does not show herself, is she so ungrateful? I am exhausted, I am exhausted, pillar of white and of black out of knives. I am the magician's girl who does not flinch. The villagers are untying their disguises, they are shaking hands. Whose is that long white box in the grove? What have they accomplished? Why am I cold? Okay, so that's the bee meeting. Uh, a lot of the great poems in that cycle, The Rival of the Bee Box, one of my favorites. Uh, check that out if you haven't. Plath is amazing. Uh, and the next poet, our poem I'm going to read is from Gerard Manley Hopkins, uh, going back in time a little bit, uh, but also a good spring poet. Uh, and uh, the one poem I'm going to read you, though, is Carrion Comfort. Uh, and we'll just go ahead and begin. Carrion Comfort. 
Not, I'll not carry in comfort, despair, not feast on thee, not untwist, slack they may be, these last strands of man in me, or most weary cry, I can no more, I can, can something hope, wish, day come, not choose not to be, but ah, but, O oh thou terrible, why wouldst thou root on me? Thy ring, earth, right foot, rock, lay a lion limb against me. Scan with darksome, devouring eyes my bruised bones and fan. O oh, in terms of tempest, me heap there, me frantic to avoid thee and flee. Why? That my chaff might fly, my grain lie, sheer and clear. Nay, in all that toil, that coil, sense seems I kiss the rod. Hand, rather, my heart low, lapped strength, stole joy, would laugh, cheer. Cheer whom, though? The hero whose heaven, handling, flung me, foot trod, me, are me that fought him. O oh, which one? Is it each one? That night, that year, of now done darkness, I wretch lay wrestling with my God, my God. All right, that's Hopkins. Um, you should check him out as well. And I hope you've enjoyed those two poems. And uh, have a great week and a great month uh, enjoying the Rathbury Tree.